What up, YouTube? It's Paracelsus. I just want to do a, uh, an abridged to be expanded on later uh, reaction slash review to um, Blade Runner 2049. So, uh, like many of uh, you weirdo esoteric types that might come through here, I have read pretty much everything Philip K. Dick except the shit that I couldn't get my hands on physically. Um, and uh, I'm a huge fan of Blade Runner. I think Ryan Gosling is a fucking pretty talented actor. And uh, Harrison Ford even came through as the old man. So um, let's get into the meat. Okay, I'm trying to do this quickly and I don't want to waste my phone, uh, battery and, uh, uh, storage space, but this shit has been like dripping on my consciousness since I saw the film. I went and saw it again. And, uh, so my first point, I got to say Hans Zimmer has seen some shit in his life. He's done some drugs. He's been beyond the veil. And also that, uh, his son or his daughter or his friend or whoever he's hanging out with plays Skyrim. Cause, uh, there's a certain chromatic, it's actually a pentatonic movement of uh, he basically quotes the Skyrim soundtrack um, multiple times. So he's not he's not he's not pulling it as a straight quotation, but he's he's basically giving it the Mozart treatment, you know. So um, it, when you when the soundtrack comes out or go on YouTube and listen to the soundtrack, listen to Skyrim, especially uh, the suites like. Uh, Streets of White Run, things like that. Um, now keep in mind, Hans Zimmer used a fucking buzz saw synth to do it, so it doesn't sound exactly the same. It's not pitch perfect. It's not like a mandolin and strings, you know. But it is the same pitch phrasing, which is considered a motif. So, um, amazing soundtrack atmospheric crazy the the scene uh the 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 world building scene after uh he finds the sprout near the dead tree uh flying through LA is just like probably one of the most powerful atmospheric pieces of film I've ever seen in my life and I'm a fucking film freak and that shit gave me goosebumps it has infiltrated my subconscious and is basically now a little universe living in my mind. So um, a lot of people are kind of like broaching this and getting into it. But, um, you know, something that uh, multiverse and string theory really talks about a lot is the idea of nesting realities. So... Um, I'm just going to grace through this. I'm not going to get spiritual, metaphysical. I'm going to leave it very subjective. Uh, excuse me. I always misspeak that word. Very objectively lay out the similarities that some people are seeing and not really connecting all the dots. So, uh, blood, black, nothingness began to spin. I'm not going to just give that away because it's like giving away the riddle, but you guys need to like literally pour your minds into that thought. And if you can't figure it out yourself, continue reading until you can figure it out. Okay. So, um, going into that inner link scene, you know, he's, sh they're, they're testing his hu humanity, you know, so, um, they know the replicants have souls they've known the whole time. That's what the baseline tests are for. It's, it's a uh, inquisition, you know, it's to make sure that you're still on the reservation. You know, it's just like when, uh, you come in from the black world and your handler sits you down and he's all right, can you go back to civilization now? Have you fucking completely blown your human box? Or do you think you can exist with the plebes for a few months? Fucking go eat Turkey. You know, like that's that's the type of shit they do. Sit you down, you know, and they'll they'll run you through your your basically your psych test, you know. So um K specifically 
is pursuing lies. It begins in the format of lies, you know, so <coughs> that's something to consider. And the entire idea of memories, you know, I mean, this, it, it's, memory is a very uh, smoky thing. And it's something that in science and neurochemistry and exogenesis, if it's possible, is essential, you know, so um, the nature of memory and the fabric of psyche is the crux of artificial intelligence. Because if you can never basically incept organic, um, it's not consciousness, but it's an organic, um, kind of, uh, anxiety, almost preservation, fear, fear is a human emotion, you know? So, um, Every replicant that has to void comp or baseline has fear because they they know the specifics of it. The the parameters of their programming limits their fear response. But as they gain experiences, that's why they have to come in after they gain experiences and then go through void comp and baselining. And so here we go through the fourth wall and we look at Ridley Scott. You know, Ridley Scott's saying something not only about us as the viewers, but about himself and our world. Uh, he really is, is, is daring us to defy our reality and defy common definition of what is real. You know, I mean, so we've got Kay, who's a real character in his world, but to us, he's fictional. He's seeking out lies. And he's reciting from a book of fiction, which exists in our world. Um, so you're seeing the nesting. Ridley Scott creates a character. That character cites fiction from our world in order to suss out and basically give some traction and weight to his reality. So uh, I'm running out of time on uh, this short little video, but... There's just some some really almost unsaid things that I think most people, because a lot of people don't tend to read theology or to be religious. Not that I am religious. I'm not religious at all. But uh, it's important to understand the past and it's important to read books. And that even really Scott reminds us of that, you know, he, he lifts the veil a little bit and just stops the cryptic, uh, kind of storytelling. And he just tells us like the sun will explode or there will be a nuclear fire fucking EMP attack, or there will be some type of calamity that all this digital, everything that's digital, it's not real. It really is not real guys. There's a zero and a one. And if they're gone, they're gone. You know I mean? And, and that you don't need a, you don't need much to accomplish this. Uh, whereas a book has to be burned and destroyed. And even the destruction of a book will leave ashes and someone will have to tell you where the ashes came from. And then you'll have to have someone tell him to tell you what to say. So it's, it's really, it's going into this theme of this nested reality, which is, <clears throat> really important to the whole concept of joy. Joy's servile to a replicant. She's not real. She knows she's not real. She knows that replicants cannot love by definition. So she knows that even though she thinks everything she's doing is genuine because it's what she's programmed to think, she knows she's programmed to think it, and she knows that Kay's a replicant and he can't love her by definition. So something, again, that people are missing out on is Harrison Ford, Deckard, right? Deckard tells Ryan, or K, Joe, sometimes to love something, you have to be a stranger, okay? So now let's take into account all the beings in the Blade Runner reality who actually know their creator, okay? We've got uh, 
um, Love, the Enforcer for Wallace. We've got uh, Sean Young's character from the first Blade Runner. And we've got the replicants throughout both films, Batty, all the all you know, all this great philosophical discourse. And it's just really eye-opening, you know, once you put it in that framework, is that Roy knew his creator. He went and fought a war for him. He was an angel. Wallace calls his creations angels. He's blind. He sits in a pyramid. You know, so all these themes, they're embedded within us. They literally go back to our evolutionary process out of the biological muck and whatever decided or whichever process or whomever decided to enter uh, seed and help us. So um, look at the look at the way these beings that know their creator or know their origin fair k dies you know it's implied he dies his tears not even lost in the rain but frozen in just a moment you know so uh wallace's angels you know and he even the blind creator um and then that miracle which was only allowed because of what ignorance no denial of love you had he had to deny his desire to love his creation in order for it to survive because his love would bring unwanted attention so anyways it's paracelsus just a quick off the top of my head i plan on doing a lot of things in depth but i plan all kinds of shit and never get around to it so hopefully you guys like this one hit me up in the comments later